So, hello to everybody. Um, I'm Jessica Metcalf, and my company is Green Mountain Evaluation, and I am so excited to speak to you all today about creative approaches to work-life balance. Um, it's a topic I feel very passionate about. Um, so, first, you know, who am I to talk about balance? I'm sure, you know, we could all we could all think this, right? Nobody's got it got it perfect. Nobody's got it totally figured out when it comes to balance, but one thing that I think um, gives me some unique insight is I have made some uniquely disastrous missteps when it comes to balance. Um, so many years ago, back at the beginning of my PhD program, I got very ill, like hospitalized, couldn't keep food down kind of ill. They ran all these tests and they couldn't figure it out. And then I started to ask a little bit about my lifestyle and you know, they found out I was taking 22 credits and I wasn't really sleeping or eating very much. And they said, oh, well, well that's obviously it. Um, there's your problem. Um, so they sent me home from the hospital with a prescription for mindfulness class and a directive to uh, rethink my priorities, and I certainly did. Um, so this definitely led to a bit of a 180 for me, and I became the, the preachy grad student in my program who told all my friends that they just needed to go to bed and take care of themselves, um, and really started to get up on my soapbox when it came to self-care. Um, and I feel like in, in grad programs, and honestly in in many companies and, and different organizations, there can be this toxic culture of overwork where folks feel like they're doing something wrong if they're not killing themselves and you know they should be bragging about how little sleep they're getting. And I, um, I kind of object to this notion. I think that we should be centering self-care and well-being and um, you know bragging about taking care of ourselves uh, as opposed to bragging about how little, how little sleep we get. Um, so these missteps lead, led me to um, really have a bit of a turnaround in the way that I approached balance. Um, recently, um, I, I quit my academic job last year and started my company. So now that I am um, you know, a self-employed individual, I really do have the agency to really live my values when it comes to self-care. Um, so I've, I've done a lot of kind of rebalancing and I um, have had some recent wins where you know, this year I have stopped using an alarm clock um, to get up in the morning, you know, it's a novel idea of just going to bed early enough to get enough sleep. Um, you know, I do spend a lot of time on my hobbies. I do a lot of gardening and I bake bread three times a week. And ultimately, I'm trying to really um, make sure that I leave room for the other areas of my life that are not um, work. And something that I definitely want to emphasize to everyone um, is that there is no one size fits all approach to finding balance. Um, nobody has the exact same combination uh, responsibilities and preferences and goals as you do so we can always be inspired by other people but taking their recipe and applying it to our life is is not likely to, to lead to success right we really want to personalize our approach here um, I will say that meeting your basic needs is the bare minimum you know get enough sleep put enough gas in the tank um, but beyond that it's really up to you and, and I should say even that meeting our basic needs can vary from person to person I need eight hours of sleep but other people only need six and that's okay, right? So learning um, kind of what are my needs, what are my um, goals, and how are they gonna affect my balancing act is really important. Um, and I should also note that I am not by any means trying to badmouth someone who works 60 hours a week and loves it, right? But I think the important thing is to be intentional when we make these choices about how we're spending our time and making sure that if you are working a ton, it's because you want to, not necessarily because the demands have just grown so, so big that you feel like you have to. Um, and I should also note that, you know, balance is not giving equal time to every single component of your life and every single, you know, role that you fill, um, you know, your career and your family and being a community member. It's not necessarily divvying things up exactly evenly, right? But it's doing a critical assessment of yourself and your values and your priorities and making sure that you're balancing your time in a way that takes care of yourself and also sets you up to reach your goals in all these different areas, right? With career and with family and with hobbies and with everything, um, because you're a whole person. Um, you're not just your job. Um, I like to tell folks sometimes about the fact that I work on the weekend. And this is not something that I would recommend to others necessarily, but this really goes along with this notion of creative approaches to self-care and being really tailored and personalized in how you are balancing your time. Um, I live in Vermont and it's super crowded on the weekends here. It's not a fun time to snowboard or go out to eat. It's just super mobbed. Um, so often I work on the weekends and I'll maybe finish work an hour or two early on a Wednesday and go snowboarding. I also often wake up to many feet of snow outside my door. So 
so I personally try not to schedule too many morning meetings in the winter. Super unique, not necessarily something that anyone else would need to do, but kind of accepting that you don't really have to think inside the box when it comes to the approaches that you're taking to balance your time. Um, I should mention um, when it comes to credibility, I do also do some coaching with other consultants who are trying to refine their balancing act. And I like to tell my clients, don't shit on yourself, right? There are wants and there are needs, and those are really important. The shoulds maybe should take a, a slightly lower priority. Um, you know, because if you're trying to live up to other people's expectations, it's going to be hard to live, you know, your best life, right? Um, I like to tell folks that my mom, um, she likes to tell people that I'm retired because I'm self-employed and I have some agency in how I spend my day. Now, do I find this offensive? Absolutely. But am I going to let her shit on me? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, um, it, she's not a client and I am absolutely meeting the needs of all of my clients, right? So it's okay if I don't, you know, put myself in that nine to five box. Um, and, you know, you also can, can think about, you know, how can you think outside the box and outside of others' expectations. I also want to emphasize that you should be approaching your balancing act like an evaluator. You would never go to a client and suggest a strategy without first getting to know them, right? Understanding their needs and their goals, their constraints. Um, so do the same when it comes to your balancing act, right? Don't just kind of go through life, really take some time, do some introspection about, you know, what do I need? What do I want? Um, so starting with self-reflection about kind of these personal characteristics that might tell you, you know, what should my balancing act look like? You know, what is your work style? Does the nine to five work well for you? Or are you feeling kind of boxed in? Um, what are your goals, both professional and personal, right? Um, what are your needs and constraints? Do you need to be ready to, you know, drive the kids to soccer practice at four o'clock? Awesome. Schedule that in, right? So making sure that you're keeping in mind kind of all your different roles when you think about um, this self-reflection. And then we also want to take a look at like, where, where are you at right now? Um, my resources worksheet has some information on something called level 10 life approach. Um, we don't have too much time to go into it right now. But just take, take some time to think about, you know, what would level 10 look like in all of these areas? What would just like knocking it out of the park look like um, in different components of your life? And kind of think about where you're at and where you'd like to go. And then just like with our clients, right, we want to reevaluate regularly. Needs change. Goals change. And they should because we're dynamic people. Um, so making sure that you're consciously, you know, kind of reassessing constantly, thinking about whether anything has changed in your life your goals, your responsibilities, um, and how you might rebalance accordingly. Um, this is just some information about me, shameless self-plug here, um, that I do always love to collaborate with other consultants. So feel free to reach out if we have any mutual interest. Um, and as I mentioned, I do also provide coaching to other consultants who are kind of looking to refine their balancing act. So if you'd ever feel like you need a thought partner as you work through that, feel free to reach out. All right, and then we've got some discussion questions, although I don't know exactly how much time we've got left. <laughs> um, two and a half minutes. Okay, all right, we've got we've got a few here. Um, so feel free to pick on any of these things. Um, you know, are, is there anything that's going really well for you recently? Someone in our last session told us about how she was, you know, breaking free of the nine to five or um, was trying to work less in the summer to have time to work with her kids. Um, so. Pick on any of these items. What are your thoughts, Daniela? Sometimes I like to talk with clients about, you know, low-hanging fruit, whether there's something small that you can kind of try to introduce into your day or something that, you know, you feel like, you know, maybe if you're locking yourself in the office, you're missing. So, you know, can you go outside for 10 minutes after lunch, introduce some, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm finding that it really helps now that I'm giving myself permission. Every Absolutely. now and then I'm tired, so I sleep in. It's like giving myself permission to sometimes do the things I need to do to care for myself, go for a walk with the dogs and, or just, you know, they're not huge things, but they're things that do help me to feel better. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only permission, but also 
you know, kind of having spaces like this where we can kind of be like, yeah, that's a win, you know, celebrating that, celebrating that, you know, you can make these small, small tweaks to, you know, make your, you know, and it helps you be a better consultant and family member and all of that when you're, when you're taking care of yourself. I'll say that I needed to make a lot of just healthier decisions in my personal life um, to keep up with all the things I was trying to do as I was developing and expanding the business. And it like just the ability, just the ability to sleep seven to eight hours at night is a huge deal. Um, and that you can do so much more during the day because of that. And I know that sounds minor and we should all know that, but it's super important. Get your sleep. Absolutely. Sleep is like the one, <laughs> the one thing that's got quite a trickle down effect. Yeah, and I see we've got, <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Some insightful comments in the chat for sure. And, and I think that an excellent point, I know we've saw mentioned earlier, you know, folks with kids connecting, totally different balancing act when you're also balancing other humans, right? <laughs> but that's very much part of, the, part of the calculations. I would say even paramount to the calculations, right? Is making sure that you can, you know, be at your best as a parent, as well as, you know, being at your best as a consultant and a friend and a family member and, and all of that. 